station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. The morning started with a live, interactive video session with the two American astronauts aboard the International Space Station, known as the ISS. On the five-story tall screen at Houston Space Center's theater, Peggy Whitson and Shane Kimbrough answered over a dozen questions about different aspects of living life in space for months at a time and the kinds of experiments they've been conducting. And I got to ask a question too. What is the brightest light, natural or man-made, that you can see from the ISS that's on Earth? Sorry, we're trying to figure that one out. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, most of the big bright lights are in, in big cities, so there's nothing that stands out to me that I've seen that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that light or whatever. Uh, but it's all man-made, of course. The city as a whole kind of looks like, you know, the bigger ones are brighter than others. Um, sorry, I can't answer that one completely. I'm kind of proud of myself. Stumped the, uh, stumped the ISS astronauts. Thanks so much. Keep up the great work. The rest of the day did not disappoint. I got a personal tour of the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, a massive warehouse of a building. Robots, rovers, and the Mars capsule Orion are all being developed there. Then I got to explore the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, where astronauts train for spacewalks in this famous huge pool. It's also where essential space gear is developed. As you can see by this sign, spacesuit technology has been incorporated into the modern sports world here on Earth in football helmets, athletic shoes, and other sportswear. The day went on to include a visit to mission control that's used today to communicate with the International Space Station and the mission control of yesterday, the very room where the Apollo 13 crew's famous message, Houston, we've had a problem, was received. Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. One of the highlights of visiting the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility was seeing the work being done on the Orion capsule that will eventually take a crew to the planet Mars. You get a real perspective on the compact quarters of the capsule and how extremely efficient and organized the equipment is inside. Weightlessness on the ISS and in space travel is a phenomenon that astronauts have to prepare for in a variety of ways. The best way is in the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, a 6.2 million gallon pool where astronauts get close to an environment of zero gravity by going underwater wearing special suits. A replica of the ISS is in the pool and astronauts submerge for as long as eight hours at a time to learn how to take spacewalks and how to make repairs while suspended in outer space. The Neutral Buoyancy Lab is also where space suits are developed and I got to try some of the gear on. And I have the glove on. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the glove, David. The glove has heaters in the very uh, tips of the fingers, and those are turned on via this switch right here. You pull this on, or you can pull it off. Okay. Cool. We have um, a palm bar, which is a rigidized bar in the palm here, in order to keep the glove from just ballooning out like a big balloon. And you can tighten that via this strap right here. And Think then we, of everything. Then we velcro this back down. We have a tether loop right here that we can have what we call a re adjustable um, tether. So it's basically a strap with a hook on it that we can use to tether objects. So we can use that hook for this. And then inside here we have a harness and this connects to a wire that runs up the inside of your sleeve and then goes out to a battery on the suit that actually powers the glove heater. Just like David Barrett there of the Extravehicular Activity or EVA department, or astronaut Victor Glover you see here, everyone I met at NASA was willing to answer questions from the very scientific to the one high on the curiosity list. But you're gonna answer the burning question that everyone has. It takes hours to get in and out of this suit. So what happens when you have to go to the bathroom? When you gotta go, you gotta go, all right? This is a maximum absorbency garment, okay? It's gonna hold in whatever needs to be held in while you're in that suit. And now you know. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication. I could have stayed in mission control and watched for hours how the NASA team communicates with the ISS and other space programs around the world. But there's something really special about the original mission control of the legendary space journeys of the 1960s. We started controlling missions since Gemini 4 in here, which is 
McDivitt and White, that was, a, that was the first spacewalk, was uh, by Ed White, first US spacewalk, was controlled out of this room. And all the Apollo missions, now during the Apollo mission, during those early missions, there was a flag that hung right where that flag is. And all through Apollo 11 through Apollo 16, um, th that same flag hung there. And then just before Apollo 17, Gene Cernan came and got it. And they, they put a different flag up and Gene Cernan took that flag and planted it on the moon. So that's the one that's planted near the uh, uh, Apollo 17 landing site is the flag that used to fly here. And this, he took this, uh, Gene Cernan took this flag as well to uh, inside the uh, uh, lunar lander. Didn't go out on the surface of the moon, but has been to the moon, it's got moon dust in it. So Gene Cernan, when he delivered it to mission control, he said, this is my gift to uh, all those who got us to the moon and back safely. I left inspired in particular by the creative problem solving of this scientific community. Smart people who believe in science come together at NASA and in countries all around the world to collaborate on efforts like the International Space Station. The research that's being done at the ISS and in space travel benefits life here on Earth. So keep looking to the sky and dreaming about space. And if a NASA visit is on your bucket list, make it happen. You won't be sorry.